Hello and welcome uh, to the presentation, Mid Journey Prompts and Style. This is Irina Shamaiva. You can find me on Facebook under this link. My portfolio on Facebook, my page is AI Brengin, the prompter. And you can learn about me uh, in various places. Google my name. I write a professional uh, blog called Bullion Strings. My professional uh, life is about online search, predominantly in relation of talent sourcing for companies. And uh, um, I, I have founded three small companies dedicated to that. One is to uh, search for talent. One is teaching people how to use online search. And one is to perform online search and get lists of professionals. So as I said, uh, uh, please uh, use the questions control panel. Please find it and say hello to me. And uh, we will be communicating through the questions panel. You will not see each other's entries for privacy. Uh, and I'm happy uh, to share some live uh, generation with me journey Discord. So tell me where you're coming from, introduce yourselves, what you're interested in. Now, if you like my presentation, please uh, give back. One thing is I uh, have illustrated uh, my friend's book, uh, that's posted here on the screen. It's $8 or 99 cents for Kindle. If you leave a, a review, uh, that would be great. Then please like and follow my page and rate my page. Uh, I would be really grateful. So let's start with the best prompt template. If you want your image to be the best, adorable, so forth, you can say so to Mid Journey. So you can say the best ever, award winning, gorgeous, stunning, beautiful, and so forth. And here's an example of the best ever three farm animals. This is the best ever portrait. And indeed, it's beautiful, right? Now, uh, Mid Journey uh, allows you to use a suffix. Uh, the command uh, in Discord is slash prefer suffix, and it, basically it's a shortcut. You can tell it what to add to each prompt. So in my suffix, I put a bunch of these words like awesome, amazing, and so forth. The dimensions, the quality, uh, style raw, we'll talk about it, and uh, the, how much to improve it stylized. This highlighted part, is something I discovered early on. It's a mix of styles. This mix of styles add, adds a very nice quality to your image. It becomes less realistic, more soft, uh, more smooth, uh, and very attractive. Now, Midjourney pays more attention to the words that uh, you put in front of your prompt. So if you want a stronger influence, you could put something like that in front of the prompt. So here is an example of the suffix use. I uh, put some words up front, uh, creatures, and then uh, some words that are my suffix. You can also do a different uh, list of means of drawing. For example, this I created with charcoal ink airbrush. Now, I don't really like when Midjourney cuts off uh, heads and stuff. Uh, so this prompt would work better if you go for uh, the dimensions that uh, create a square image, which I would do. So here is an illustration of what the suffix does. This is uh, a plain seashore. This is saying best. This is best with the suffix. This is with oil pastel. And here I put oil pastel acrylic oil in front, and you can see it gives you a stronger influence. And folks, if you have any questions as I present, please use the questions panel. I'll be paying attention as I go through my slides. Uh, the prompt was the beauty of art and nature with the uh, suffix with all the beautiful words and oil acrylic pastel, pastel oil. And no matter how many times I run, it creates 
beautiful images. So folks who have joined us uh, later, please find the questions control panel, say hello to me, introduce yourselves, and this is a place to ask any questions or comments or give me feedback. Thank you for that. So I, uh, I sort of think in, in prompts, sometimes it gets even tiring. They come to my mind. It's usually a combination of words that normally don't go together. And if you try, the, it, they could be very simple. And if you try them, uh, it, it generates very interesting images. So here is the like close up aerial. It's, it's a contradictory terms, a, a combination, lion, women, fox, uh, owl, so forth. Socialist is uh, the, uh, the company I run. And socialist is an interesting uh, prompt that generates images like that. And here are some other. Uh, I, I tried to not draw anything. It came out beautiful. Electric device to do this and that. I drew it. And then I uh, asked ChatGPT to give me a patent number so that it looks realistic. The water used to be wet and so forth. Back to the future. Me journey knows about a bunch of movies. So we'll draw something related to that. Strong modifiers. Uh, when you create your image, uh, if you're not satisfied, you can add words that will make it better. If, um, if you put real photo of, a photo realistic in front of it, it, it may start looking sharper, better. Uh, if it's uh, overloaded with stuff, as sometimes uh, Midjourney does, put simple, pre primitive, minimalistic. Uh, sizes, like small, tiny, um, whimsical, uh, instantly changes what you draw. This is an example, surreal, psychedelic. If it cuts, if it cuts off um, parts of the body, you can tell it full body, or you can describe what's on the head, what, what, what boots the, uh, the uh, creature is wearing. And design or design off is also good. I have a comment. Photorealistic is technique used to, for painting, not for photography. I'm not talking about painting or photography. I'm saying that if you put the word photorealistic in front of your prompt, uh, quite often uh, it improves it. So let's see who do, who, who do we have. Vancouver, Canada, Israel, Costa Rica, Belgium, Vietnam, um, Los Angeles. All right. Uh, I have a great prompt here, uh, suggestion here, saying in a room helps me get full body. That's great to hear. And if you if you have hints to share, I'll be glad to read them back to you. Adjectives. The more the merrier. Ask ChatGPT for a, a list of 100 adjectives that point to something wonderful and beautiful. Uh, they will definitely improve what you're painting. So. Adjectives really is something that, like, if you write, uh, say, a story, adjectives may work against you. It kind of get the story watery, but the journey picks them up and improves the image with every word. Now, there are many ways to generate prompt. Uh, I don't know how many, uh, but let's look at some of them. So imagination, something controversial. I gave you some examples. They're endless. A great way to work with Midjourney, and I'm sure many of you have used it, is slash describe. You do slash describe. You pull in any image, anything ugly, anything uh, that uh, is unrecognizable, and it generates four prompts for you that are usually very good quality sometimes unexpected. And then if you like some style uh, of the, uh, some styles of the images that came back from Describe, you can be reusing it for totally different subjects. Uh, if you want to recreate an image, use Describe, but also upload the original image and use it as part of the prompt. I would say Describe is not for 
reproducing uh, reproducing the image. Uh, but if you upload an image as part of a prompt, it will be trying to create something similar. Can you show us how to add the ChatGPT plugin to Midjourney, please? I will. For now, I was only speaking about ChatGPT creating lists of synonyms, and that I can show. Let's go to ChatGPT. We can use 3.5, that's good for that. New chat and say uh, list, list synonyms for beautiful. So just copy and paste the stuff uh, in front of your prompt and it will improve it. And we will be talking about uh, plugins. I use uh, two plugins for prompts and I will show you. So chat GPT based on examples. This is the same chat GPT. And as you know, chat GPT learns from examples. The same as Midjourney. Chat GPT has accumulated tons of uh, text and if uh, it learns from that. So if you go, if you give it prompts that you like and tell it to generate more, it will do an excellent job. It, it would do better than if you give it directions on what to do. Then ChatGPT has two plugins that I use. One is specifically Midjourney, it's called Photorealistic. And another is, it's not, uh, it's, uh, not specifically for Midjourney, it's called Perfect Prompt and it can be used for generating prompts. Then as uh, uh, I was prompted, uh, you can uh, dra drag in an image for it to create similar images, quotes from anything, and then steal, borrow, and modify prompts from others. I gave a, a webinar on uh, Midjourney back in April, and the recording of it is on YouTube. Uh, at that time, we had uh, version 4.1, uh, the version, uh, uh, sorry, the version 4. The version 5.1 that's out there is uh, way superior, uh, but these uh, examples work. So describe something uh, sort of ugly and, and get a variety of things. Another describe, I also took from my slides from that presentation. So this is Midjourney 4 version four, but it works to illustrate the concept. So I describe an image I liked, I, I get images like that, and then I can, if I like the style, I can put in a different subject, and here from this style, I will get something like this. Uh, in uh, the prompts that are generated by Describe, quite often you will see the names of known artists. And it even uh, high, uh, underlines them. Uh, it is a Google search for the artist so that you can take a look at the, uh, at the artist's creations. Now, if you take the same prompt and substitute the artist's names, pick them from somewhere, ask ChatGPT, pull them up from uh, your previous described results, the results will be somewhat different, which is interesting. So um, describe generated prompt. Uh, it w I, I had this, I added these words because I wanted to uh, draw something uh, related to British TV, which I love and watch every night. Uh, and this is also part of the prompt. And as I said, photo of or uh, photorealistic and real, real is a really strong word. And I added the highlighted keywords. And I think I have the results here. So this is the result uh, of, it is a Scottish village generated from this prompt with my addition and with photo of put a prompt. You can see that it, it doesn't look like photo at all but the quality is better with that. Now, uh, quite recently, I've realized what style raw does. So with, five, with version 5.1, uh, you can draw 
uh, with the uh, prompt that includes dash dash style raw or not. What does it mean? If you use style raw, it does not fantasize as much. It kind of tries to stick to your prompt. It's like verbatim uh, mode in Google search when, where it doesn't interpret what you're asking about. So here's style raw with my uh, suffix. So uh, you can see the style. And these are farm animals. Now look what happens if I drop style raw. See, we, now, we are now getting some weirdest animals here. Look at this. Uh, we got a girl. We got some really wild imagination. And sometimes it like completely deviates from the subject. I <clears throat> ran into it by running a prompt, an apple a day keeps the doctors away. Uh, uh, without the style raw, it wasn't even drawing doctors. It was drawing God knows what, very interesting. And at that point, I realized what it does. So if you wanted to imagine, if you wanted to push its imagination into your creation, uh, do not use style raw. If you want to be more, let's say, realistic, though it probably doesn't apply, do use it. How many of you have played with that? Let me know in the questions panel. Now, uh, I'm dyslexic, uh, self-diagnosed, and I uh, mistyped quite a bit, <laughs> resulting in some interesting stuff. So this I mistyped on purpose. This is family breakfast mistyped with uh, very interesting results. And the next slide, uh, I mistyped uh, uh, unintentionally. Uh, he went bananas. And look at the results. There are no bananas. And the results are very interesting and very diverse. Yeah? OK. Now, chat GPT. As I said, chat GPT is trained on, on a, a myriad of examples. So if you give it examples that uh, uh, you already know, sorry, uh, it will start creating them for you. OK? So. I'm giving uh, it some prompts that I got from Describe and ask it to create more prompts. And sure enough, uh, it does create prompts that are just as good. And I will demonstrate that. So let me find Describe. OK. So whatever, uh, I will copy a few to teach it. Let me bring ChatGPT back on the screen. New chat. Let's go with four. It's slower, but it's obviously better quality. Generate 10 prompts like these. So this is one. Let's pick something else. Let's pick a variety so that it learns better. And I will pick a third one, and then we'll go. And in the meantime, please think of what you want to draw. And let me know in the questions panel, OK? What do you want to draw? Do you use your own Midjourney Discord channel? Of course. I mean, if you use the newbies part, it, it's hard to see what, what you're doing. OK, so uh, I'll do just this. And the next thing, uh, you can tell me what it is that you want to, to draw. Anything you want to draw, let me know in the questions panel. So let's try the first one. OK. Ah. Mid journey, and let's see what happens. By the way, if you're getting images like these, a woman uh, with closed eyes, with hair, or a kid in the middle, and balloons, it means Mid journey did not understand you. This is this is its default output. So I am uh, entering the first prompt that 
we created. And uh, it's, I struggle with good mermaids. Well, some things Midjourney does struggle with. I'll, I'll speak about it uh, towards the end, okay? So somebody mostly likes realistic portraits. So we can say um, 10 prompts for realistic Yeah, everybody has problems with mermaids. Let's see what we created. So here's we created porcelain teapot. Not too bad. Uh, others probably would do better. Now let's do uh, a realistic portrait. Now it won't be very realistic because I have my um, addition, but let's see what happens. So we can port uh, of real. We can force it to be. Now I have uh, 16 by 9. For portraits it's better to uh, to do square. But um, okay, schoolyard full of children. Let's repeat that heat discord uh, interface. I, I so hope that they will replace it with a sign site sometime soon. School yard full of children. And we'll remove teapot and leave this tile. Okay. So here is a more realistic portrait. And I would have done better. And I can do that maybe later if I did um, uh, square things. But here, here are your realistic old men. The wrinkles, not bad. And here we're getting uh, a schoolyard full of children. Are you using a plugin for ChatGPT now? Mine generates something strange and not good. We're not uh, using plugins in ChatGPT yet. We're just using GPT-4 algorithm, teach it from our prompts, and it generates new prompts for us. So here are your, your uh, school your children in the same style as that teapot. The default is humans are unsmiling, and I love that, I, I, right? A carefree motorcycle rider riding through a forest. That's a cool one. And let's pick the style of this. Mm -hmm. Emphasis and character. Let's pick a style of the second one here and see what happens. Okay, so we'll, we'll wait a little, then I'll go back to the slides and we'll continue. And then I, I will be showing you the two plugins for ChatGPT. The ChatGPT plugins, both of them, generate very verbose prompts, and people are Oh, Midjourney doesn't understand it. Doesn't matter. Uh, Midjourney still draws something beautiful. So let's see what our mo motorcycles will look like with a lifetime uh, of experience and wisdom. We can also say close up if we, we're not satisfied uh, with the view. Okay, here are your motorcyclists. Not too bad, I'd say. Now it's creating a motorcycle. We'll get back to it uh, <clears throat> in a moment when it's done. What is Q5 at the end of the prompt? Q5 is quality. Uh, uh, minus minus Q, uh, the argument is a number from one to five, and uh, uh, it improves quality. I do product shots for fashion, for example, leggings. I do really well, but leggings first done on a woman, it doesn't cut off feet. 
and I often get three legs. <laughs> we'll talk about it. So these are motorcycle motorcyclists uh, closer to us. Let's go back to the slides. So here are some prompts you can try, and uh, you can create endless prompts, pasting examples into ChatGPT and asking it for more. So this was uh, this is also uh, Midjourney 4. This is a, uh, a slide from the previous presentation. Not too bad. Underwater tea party. So uh, um, I uh, asked uh, ChatGPT for uh, nonsensical prompts like from Jabberwock, and uh, it created uh, prompts that didn't make any sense. And uh, of course, Midjourney tries to make sense of everything if, if you type in random characters. And it generated a, a bunch of wonderful nonsense prompts. I know some of you even tried those as well. Stealing prompts. So I am on Facebook a lot, of course. And uh, if I see a prompt that I like, I would uh, um, steal it, maybe adjust it. You know, also, you, you can uh, pick up a book, open it on a random page, point your finger on a random line, use it as a prompt. You can look at the news uh, and so forth. It's, it's all material for me journey to fantasize. Uh, there are some writers and poets who have... who have uh, written... Um, prose and poems in in a way that is very poetic and visual. Here are some writers, here are some poets, uh, Russian poets of the Silver Age, Nikolai Zabolotsky, da Daniel Harms, all of these, uh, this is whimsical stuff. Uh, they all create, uh, have created uh, fantastic prompts for us. So anything you can pick up and turn it into a prompt. If you don't like it, uh, save an image, pull it in uh, and describe it, and you, you may be in luck. Now, when the journey draws several characters, I, I try to draw these four characters, and I think they're all uh, uh, Marquez right, uh, characters. Uh, it has trouble uh, creating images with characters that differ, it tends to merge them, sometimes in awkward ways and so forth. So here is a, a piece of a poem by a, a Russian poet of the uh, beginning of the century, Anna Akhmatova. I'll, I'll read it back to you in Russian and the translation is here on the screen. Когда бы знали, из какого ссора растут стихи, не ведая стыда, как удуванчик под забором, so our uh, images come out of anything, of any rubbish, eh, 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 and uh, they look awesome. Okay, so uh, plugins. Uh, to have, uh, uh, to use plugins, you need to pay, I believe it's $20. Maybe they reduced it, I'm not following. Uh, then you go to ChatGPT and you tell it which plugin to use. Uh, it has very poor user interface, so you have to scroll through plugins to find the ones you want. Uh, one is oriented towards photography, specifically on uh, Midjourney, and let it me bring it in. So I'm starting a new chat, then it will be GPT-4, and uh, here are the plugins. Uh, and let's see. Prompt Perfect is the second one I want to show you. And where's the photorealistic? See, it's, it's here, here we go. So I'm using photorealistic, remove this. And uh, can you find these plugins in the Chrome store for extension? No, Chrome extensions is a totally different story. You can find them in your chat GPT account. Uh, find GPT-4, then you can go to browse plugins, and there is a bunch, and select one of these. So what do we, do we want to draw? If 
fashion leggings. What? Uh, it's called product photography, right? So I believe it will generate two prompts here. And we can use either. It's kind of slow, but it's worth your waiting. And then it'll give us some camera settings. Uh, I don't care a whole lot about camera. If you do, you can use it. Uh, but Midjourney creators say that uh, a lot of these settings don't make a whole lot of difference. Okay, so let's let's do a pair of leggings, and I will ignore uh, the camera settings for now. And then there will be a second prompt here, uh, a variation of fashion leggings, pretty similar usually, uh, but could be worth trying as well. And again, I, I, I can include the stuff, but it really uh, wouldn't make a whole lot of difference. And obviously, we should do dimensions differently for this one. So, um, here it didn't cut off the legs. We'll see what comes out when it's done. In most cases, camera settings do not affect the image, only in specific ca cases such as Polaroid. OK. Yeah, they mentioned it during the office hours. So here is uh, the first gener uh, creation of leggings. Not extremely impressive, but I'm sure we can work on it. And uh, uh, the other one comes came out very differently with uh, women wearing them. And if you want to see the woman's feet, say full body or uh, say uh, sneakers, so forth. So the leggings person, how do you like these leggings? In a room, right? I forgot about that. We'll do that. Okay. So this is oriented towards photography, uh, and this is one result I uh, got through this prompt. Uh, this is another result uh, uh, generated through photorealistic. I used, I pasted uh, all of it and getting these uh, nice strawberries. Um, creates uh, fantastic prompts for black and white photography, um, create, uh, you know, uh, people, children, uh, portraits, landscapes, cityscapes, all of that. Now, some words are banned. Uh, somebody says, I sell, said full frontal, and they banned it. You can appeal, and sometimes that they will allow, allow you to run with it. Um, now, Perfect Prompt is a different plugin, uh, and let's let's get to it. And, and here uh, you can see an image created when I asked uh, for a creature with different body parts from different farm animals, and it's one of the many uh, a variety of images it created. So again, we're going to GPT-4, and now we're using we want to use a different plugin, not photorealistic. But perfect prompt. See how it's, why is it this? OK. Why is it, does it have this thing? OK. So now we have a perfect prompt. What do we want to draw? Let's say, uh, and here, because you can use the perfect prompt for anything, you need to tell it that it is a prompt for your uh, AI art. Prompt for AI image of fashion photography. Let's do black and white for, for, for a change in I'm dyslexic. Okay. 
Any more suggestions? I'm happy to type them in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's start over. We have perfect prompt here. Sport cars. Yeah, it's very, I'm sorry. Um, go out and in again? You mean log out, log in, redraw? I think it's not. Sorry, we, we can try to go back or use a different plugin. We can, but obviously it will work most of the time. Let's go back to the plugin that worked, which is photorealistic. And maybe this symbol means something. And let's see, let's try this. They have another one. Which one? By the same name? Could be, yeah. You know the demo effect when things don't work? That's enough. Here is fashion photography. Oi! I didn't copy it. See, it's very wordy, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, Midjourney skips those words, and the results are excellent. And let's say uh, sports car wire frame. A long time ago, I was in the software business uh, creating wire frames, not for sports car, uh, but um, for uh, for family cars. <laughs> no, this this ending of the prompt will not work. How about this? So I'm doing a car. Uh, using the style of one of the earlier images. And here's your fashion photography. Uh, the prompt was generated with a plugin, and we asked for it to be black and white. I am interested in creating moody, whimsical landscape with a hand painted effect. Okay. So I'm just copying what you've asked me. And without ChatGPT, I will use it as a prompt. We, we're getting our sports car. That's not quite sports car. But uh, maybe Vasily Petrov influenced it. Influenced it. Um, so I'm just inputting what you have asked for. And uh, let's see what happens. So here is your sports car. It's pretty old. This is awkward, uh, but it's interesting, right? The person driving a car with a passenger never good results. Mid journey is awful at knowing uh, how a person drives a car. The person would stick out of the car. The wheel will be on the side. Uh, the person's hand will be, uh, you know, going through the window. It's very hard to overcome. So this is a moody, whimsical landscape for you. It's not very whimsical. We could probably add some whimsical characters, but it's beautiful, I think. Yeah. A woman putting on lipstick. I'm not bothering with ChatGPT for that.
And I suspect something may go wrong there, but we'll see. OK, so let's get back to the slides, and then we'll get back to mid-journey for more uh, attempts. Uh, so this is uh, what Perfect Prompt generated for me. Um, and now I want uh, to speak about something completely different, and that is related to the art of Mike Kososky, a fellow AI artist who has a uh, invented a certain way of drawing that's pretty fascinating and was kind enough to spend an hour or so with me uh, teaching his stuff. So I very much recommend following uh, his art on his page. And what Mike does is some subject and then some sort of algorithm optimization. The algorithms are on his page, pinned to his page, but these algorithm names are not intrinsic to uh, mid journey. Uh, you can uh, write, you know, a whimsical algorithm optimization and also get good results. So the point is to balance the weights in your prompt. You know about weights. You can put uh, uh, two columns and then put a weight uh, uh, on some words, bringing them forward, making them more important. Okay, so. Here is, here is an example of kind of a CAD, but kind of an algorithm. This is an example I generated uh, last night. And this is a very good example of how, I'm sorry about that call. So he, you can see that uh, two uh, of the images are about the algorithm, and two of the images got some uh, subjects uh, on, on them. So uh, if you go under here, you will see Mike's names of algorithm, uh, but uh, you will be able to use any words you like. I have a question of weights. Let's bring back. So here, our women putting on lipstick in all the awkward way, uh, ways. And image, uh, uh, the weights are this. So you can say cat. And images can be uh, as large as 10,000. Let's say cat 30 and dog. Let's say cats and dogs. And then we can say, now the word cat is has more weight. It, cat is, cats are more important to make journey than uh, dogs. So we can say cats and dogs and, and say dogs 200. So the results, I expect the first to have mostly cats and the second to have mostly dogs. And you apply these weights to uh, Mike's algorithms. Uh, thing. You put a weight on subject and a weight on algorithm. You can use several algorithms in a row. Uh, my favorite, and I think Mike's favorite as well, is elliptic algorithm. So he, see, this is uh, cats. There are no, there's no sign of dogs. This is interesting, right? And this, this still favors cats. So we'll have to say dogs maybe a thousand or even ten thousand to get dogs, but it started showing us some dogs here. See, they just started appearing. Okay, so elliptic algorithm creates uh, beauty like this, but it also creates scenes like we saw the orange seas. Oh right, I mistyped the. Uh, let me correct that. Did I? No, I did not mistype it. I can do. Uh, let's let's do. Let's go the whole way. Hey, let's do two thousand for dogs. Now we should see predominantly dogs. Okay. 
uh, and then I just used the word elliptic to say elliptic home gadget, and it created things like this. Two times, yeah, I think I did. Ah, I did not, you're right. You're absolutely right. That's why we've got so few dogs. Um, two columns, now we should be getting dogs. We, we are getting some a little bit here. And this is messy. So for an image like that, I would go with the word like simple or um, minimalistic, minimal. A woman in the style of ornamented script. This is interesting. Let's try this one. I, I, I'm reading back your suggestions. Now this is going somewhere with the dogs. Do you want any algorithms here? Let's say optimization. So here are heavily weighted dogs. Still there are some signs of cats and then it added some environment for them. The more algorithms, the better, right? Let's see what comes out of this. And let me go back to the slides. I'll finish the slides and then uh, uh, for the rest of the time, I can continue playing with image creation, okay? And your feedback, your questions are really appreciated. So consistent characters are hard. Um, uh, while the majority of my prompts, I, I, I'm able, I'm ready to share about 80% of what I generate. If I am trying to create a consistent character, it takes tons of uh, runs, tons of comparison. So you need to be patient and you prompt with images. You know how to prompt with images, right? You, you write, imagine and drag an image in like this. Here is your ornamental woman. So you can um, pull up an image. Can we do this? No. Where are my images? Let's, no. So I need to start with describe instead of imagine. Uh, no, I need to just start, sorry. Start with imagine and then I am, uh, again, I, I, I lied. First, I need to have um, an uh, image URL, a public image URL. I create that uh, from wh wherever, but I can create it just by dragging an image here. And if I open it, uh, I have its public it, uh, uh, URL, and which is I then use in the prompt creation. Okay. And then we can say boy and animals. So now it will uh, be basing this image, uh, the creation on this image and using the words I have entered. You can use styles of typography and majority will use the design for the fonts and apply them to re the results. I will need to learn about that. I don't, I don't know much about it. So now it is creating images that are kind of like this, right? Similar. Now, the best way to create something very similar is to run variations. Uh, when it's ready, we can uh, enlarge images by pressing any of these but we can also uh, uh, redo the images and these would be the closest. So when uh, you're creating uh, consistent images, this is the first thing, we're using variations. Then after you get enough of the same person, of the same character, you start prompting 
with their images and varying the words after that so that um, uh, the, uh, the character keeps developing. For our book about this prehistoric boy, uh, I first generated the boy's face, uh, then the face facial expressions, then uh, older boy, then I started drawing the boy's body and it put a t-shirt on him, which uh, I had to fight. Uh, and, and then uh, I generated the boy's family members and some action, so them around a fire. So this is the closest to creating uh, very similar images. So this is, to, the, you start with this, uh, creating consistent characters, uh, and then you proceed to prompts with images, and then you vary your uh, addition to the prompt uh, to uh, generate variations of them, their relatives, them in action, them in moods, and so them in scenes, and so forth. Okay. So this is the boy five from the book. And this is my attempts to create the boy at an older age. And then if you get the book, you will see uh, uh, the whole story and the family and so forth. So, so here I'm uh, using a lot of prompts, like a dozen, uh, a lot of uh, public URLs of the images of similar boys to create uh, faces. Okay. What Midjourney cannot draw? This link goes to a post on Midjourney official group. Uh, uh, where people happily shared images that uh, Midjourney failed to create. And uh, scissors is, is a big challenge. Actually, it's a challenge for any uh, text to image generator. I mean, Journey cannot draw maps. Uh, this was my request to draw a map of the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, it does know uh, what the architecture looks like. It does not quite know about seasons. So you can create a Golden Gate Bridge in winter. It would put some snow on it, uh, though we never have snow here. It's eternal spring. But they're pretty, these maps. Even if you say Google Maps, it will draw something like that, something fairy tale like quite often. So I'm at the end of my slides. Many of you are already members. We have a wonderful growing group with spectacular uh, artists, uh, with all different styles, uh, people to follow. The group is very kind to everyone. You will get your likes and comments and laughs. Uh, so I am very happy with the group. I run a bunch of groups for professional, and this is probably the best group. I uh, hope to keep it this way. We allow everybody pages, uh, posting links, no restrictions as some other groups do. And uh, this is the last slide. So my a uh, art is here. This is my email address. And everyone who have, uh, has signed up for the presentation, we had uh, 88 signups, 26 people are here live, which is was something that I expected. I will email everyone a copy of these slides so that you can repeat and play with the prompts and a, uh, a recording. It will take me some time to upload the recording and the person who's helping me is probably out on the weekend. So by Monday, I should be able to send that to you. Maybe I'll send you a temporary recording on Dropbox and, uh, uh, and then uh, we'll go from there. Thank you so much. What is my YouTube channel? My other channels are all AI brain game, YouTube, Twitter, uh, and other stuff. My art is also on sites uh, like um, Redbubble and Fine Art America, where you can uh, print, uh, uh, do a print, do T-shirts, mugs, uh, what, uh, shower curtains, stuff like that. So uh, we have about five, six minutes left. I'm happy to hear your feedback, to answer any more questions, to go back to any slide, to uh, go over some technique that caught your attention. 
and stuff like that. Uh, so please use the question panel. Thank you for your active participation. I am learning from you as well. And this is delightful. See you on Facebook. How to fix eyes and fingers. I don't see any problem with eyes. With fingers, it's a matter of trying a number of times, uh, you know. Next time, algorithm. Let's try talk Mike Asoski into doing a presentation on algorithms. He's, he's the guy. How to get rid of captions in a picture. Uh, you can, uh, in your prompt, you can put slash uh, uh, minus minus no and put a bunch of things there, such as watermark, text. I'd say that uh, 5.1 is much, much easier, much, much better at not cre uh, adding some text. 4.1, my uh, suffix had a whole lot of no text, no letters, and so forth. The word negative. I know the word minus, minus no, no. Do you need specify version 5? Uh, if you go to settings, you can see your settings and specify them. The, uh, the uh, uh, default is version 5.0. If you wanted to stop fantasizing, you select raw mode. And then you can uh, se select other options here, and you can change them at any time. OK, anything else? Any more feedback? And I will be stopping the recording shortly. And again, I'm grateful for you to come. I hope to eventually write a book based on these materials. Uh, I think some of this stuff it has not been shared elsewhere, and uh, hope you will be practicing your art. Thank you so much. I am closing the recording.